Hey Fiddle Life YouTube, welcome back to another episode. Okay, so this episode, some bad news. Unfortunately, World's End has got ick. Now, where did the ick come from? Two possibilities. Definitely hasn't come from the fish. I quarantine all my fish and they go through copper, Prazi Pro. So I am 100% confident that the ick has not come from there. So where did the ick come from? Well, if you remember a few weeks ago, I added 20 hermit crabs. And at the time, I can't remember if I had corals or if I was rescaping or what it was, but I was adding them the exact same time as I was doing something else. And <coughs> I didn't quarantine the, the hermit crabs. And unfortunately, I actually forgot to scrub the shells. I always scrub the shells of all snails and crabs and everything that I get, but that 20, I never did it. And it's quite possible there could have been ick. Um, maybe some of the, the water that they were in, who knows, right? Other possibility is when I added the starfish, if you remember rightly, because I didn't want to expose the starfish to air, so I drip acclimated them for at least two hours. I then put a wee dish in, collected the starfish, kept them in the water, poured a little bit of the water out, but some of that water, I then stuck it into here, so the starfish didn't get exposed to air. So it's very possible that that manoeuvre right there is how the ick got into the tank and it never showed its face because well the tank hasn't had any stress so the ick hasn't been able to get attached to any of the fish because all the fish have been super healthy the immune systems are pumping and they're uh, living life however <clears throat> a week ago 10 days ago whatever it was i added the fox face the jaw fish and the four fungi cardinals so this obviously switches up the dynamic of the tank, causes a little bit of stress. And uh, the first fish I noticed to have the stress, and not only that, right, possibly with me doing the rescape and rescaping the rocks and then the fish having to find new territories, I believe that's been the major cause of the, the outbreak, which has reduced the immune system of the fish and allowed the parasite to take hold first fish that got it when showing signs of it was the regal tongue, the hippo tongue as you call it in America, uh, Dory. I noticed a few spots on her and I was like whoa 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 what the hell and that was the first fish to get it. I then noticed the yellow tongue and the purple tongue and now the powder blue tongue. So it was at this stage I thought right <clears throat> ick's no joke um, Velvet's obviously worse But ick, still no joke uh, You don't do anything Your fish are going to die There's just no ifs, buts or maybes Right And I know a lot of people Will take ick and think Oh it's okay, the fish is going to uh, Immune system will kick in They'll fight it off That's just stupid Don't do that, don't be that person you're not well, you need medicine, right? You need to get treatment. These fish, if I don't have DNA in it, they're going to die. There's, there may be one or two that will be able to survive this. But I can guarantee you, powder blue, my tongs, clean fish, <coughs> they're all going to get wiped out. So I needed time to come up with a plan, right? Now, feeding garlic, that's not going to cure it. Right, all garlic is, it's not going to stop your fish getting ick. All garlic is, is it's like you having a bag of chips and you put a bit of salt on it. it makes them taste better, a bit of flavour. That's all it is for them, right? It's not going to get rid of your ick. So then you can think like, oh, I feed my fish garlic, they're not going to get it. They will get ick. <coughs> but, I needed time, right? So, I've got a plan now, and to give myself a little bit more time, 
I started using, oh, where is it? Here it is. So to give myself a bit more time, I've been using this Reef Medic, right? Now, it's a reef safe conditioner. This is not going to kill your ick, right? So don't I think this is reef safe, this will kill the ick, all my fish will be perfect, and I've got no worries. No, no. This is just, you cut yourself, this is just a little plaster. This is a little plaster, a little band-aid. It's going to give you a bit more time to do the proper thing. Now, to kill the ick, two possible ways of killing it, right? You put them in hyposalinity. So you have your fish at like 1.008 to 1.009. That's stressful on the fish. But it's not as bad as them going through it. But obviously you don't put them to hyposalinity from going from like 1.026 right down to 1.008 or 009. Because you're just going to kill your fish. You'd have to do that gradually, right? Now, my fish are covered in it. And it get them down to that salinity, I'd be very surprised if they actually survive that because it's going to take so long to get them to that level that's going to kill the ick, right? The next option, the best option, is copper. Now, granted, not all fish deal with copper that well, especially like your angels, your mandarin dragonettes and stuff like that. However, in your copper band, my fish have all been through copper, right? <coughs> and you just keep it at the level that the bottle says. Whatever bottle of, doesn't matter what copper you're using, right? Just stick to the instructions it says on that bottle and you'll be fine. That's what I'm gonna do. So, as much as a pain in the backside as this gonna be, I need to get these fish out, right? Now I've got, I'd say three tanks. I've got three tanks that I can use for quarantine. I've got two in my wee fish room and I've got a 90 litre one, right? I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna stick it out the top of my stairs. I've not got a stand for it, but I can't stick all these fish in, in the two tanks. It's just gonna be too much of a wood. They have to come out. There's no, there's nothing else I can do. If I don't, if I just rely on this and do this, I mean, I've been using this now for 10 days, it ain't solved jack shit. The fish are still got it. Granted, there's maybe not as many spots, but this is not gonna kill the egg. This, to be quite honest with you, is garbage. It's crap, right? You'd be as well throwing this in the bin. The only reason I'm using it is to give me time. That's all it is, time. My tank is infected with ick, and I need time to get everything prepared to get these fish out of here. Now, the last three, four days, I've been getting my quarantine tanks all up and running. Um, pretty much keep them running anyway, but I've been dozing the bacteria, checking that there's copper levels and everything's low enough for me to add the fish. I don't want to add them straight to a full dose of copper. Um, so... Yeah, so this, not a cure, just gives you time to do the proper thing, okay? Right, I don't want to keep harping on about that, but it is important that you know, and it doesn't matter if you're using Medic, or Kick Ick, or Ick Attack, or whatever garbage it is, it's just garbage, it's not going to solve your problem. There is no reef safe, reef safe way of killing ick. There just is now. You might get rid of it and you might think, oh, my fish haven't had any sports for weeks, but I guarantee the minute there's another bit of stress in the tank, it's gonna come back and it'll come back with a vengeance. So just do yourself a favor. Again, it's a pain in the backside taking fish out. I'm gonna hate it, probably strip this tank, move, remove all the rocks in order to catch the fish. It's just something that you have to do. Then, once I've done that, this tank is going to have to stay follow with no fish for 10 weeks. Minimum 10 weeks. To ensure that the parasite goes through its life cycle. And 
completely dead because it'll have no ghosts, it'll starve to death. So, first plan of action is I'm going to start taking out whatever loose rocks I can and I'm going to stick them into my sump, eh, into the refugium. So that's a handy place that I can remove move rocks over there, make sure there's no um, fish stuck in any of them, get them into there. And then I'm going to get my black container, fill that up with some water and I'll start hoisting all the rocks into that. And then it's just going to be a case of trying to catch fish, get them into buckets, acclimate them to whatever quarantine tank I'm going to put them into. And then the treatment starts and then hopefully in two weeks the egg will be gone, my fish will be healthy and uh, yeah, it'll be happy days apart from having an empty tank with just rocks. So I'll give you a quick look at the tank and we'll see if we can uh, try and capture the white spot on the fish so you can see what I'm on about. My clown fish, um, they were fine for about five, six days, but now they're looking really bad. And even though they're white, you can still see all these lumps on them. Um, so yeah, the, the medics, it's given me a week, I would say, uh, to get things in place but yeah it's not it's not a cure believe me it's not a cure right let's go have a look okay so let's see if we can get a close-up of uh, Dory here it's hard to get close to her because she kind of moves about really quick Look at the clown fish. So you can see the lumps and spots all over them. Yellow tongue has definitely got something, well, egg on him, because I noticed he started scratching. Now one thing with the egg is you'll get, you'll notice a few spots and it's usually about a week you'll see the spots. Then once you start seeing your fish scratching against the rocks and the sand, that's the parasite developing and getting further in its stage cycles and when you start seeing your fish scratching that's basically like a warning sign that you need to act you need to do something you keep waiting bad things gonna happen so uh, I've lost one of the barn guys, it turns out the two that was in this corner were both males, so that one more or less kicked the crap out the other one, so unfortunately he's gone. The other two barn guys, I'm not sure if these are two males, but they've kind of like split up and kept their distance. So, um, when I get these into quarantine, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to put the three of them together or we'll keep them separate in the hopes that maybe we'll get a pair but then inevitably one of them will die so I might actually keep them separate until we go back into the display when the time's right 
powder blue he's actually showing some spots on his fins it is really difficult this to see this on camera I don't know if you can notice on his fin there one little dot to me tang he's covered he's looking pretty bad is he picking a fight with this wallowtail yep he's covered in it Okay, so I've moved the majority of the rock into the refugium. Still some pieces in here, which I need to remove into the black container, which I will add. But what I'm going to do now is I've just this minute set up the 90 litre aquarium. I'm going to pump some water out of this tank up the stairs using this Eheim 5000 on. And uh, that way I can just catch whatever fish it is that's going into that tank. I don't need to worry about um, acclimating them and what have, you, what have you. So they can just go straight in and the copper treatment can just start straight away. And obviously if there's ick in the water, well, it's not going to make any difference. It's going to die with the copper. Okay, pump's on. Okay, so I've got Lucifer the Hell Freaky in here. I've got the two Mandarins, Zeus and Electra, and the two Platinum Clownfish. So I'm going to add some Cupramine to the tank now. And I know Mandarins don't particularly get on well with copper, but I'm only going to add a small dose and we'll see how things go keeping an eye on them and if I have to I will get another tank for them and just have them in low sal hypo salinity so 40 drops per 20 drops per 40 litres so this tank holds around about 90 litres, so I've added 40 drops just now, so to treat 80 litres. Then we'll wait two days and we'll doze again. But before I doze again, I'm going to test the copper level to make sure that it doesn't go too high. It's obviously not enough, it's not going to treat anything um, too much. It's not only going to kill the parasite, it's going to kill your fish. Just filling up the next quarantine tank. Okay, so here's where I'm at. I've had to remove some of the rock into here. Now, the Fridmani Dotty back, um, Pretty sure he's either in this rocks or he's inside one of the rocks in there. Um, yeah, it's uh, I've no idea how I'm going to manage to catch him. Like, I've managed to get a few others. Still, the big fish to go. Um, they're proving a bit tricky, and trying to catch them with with the least amount of stress as possible because obviously they're stressed out as it is with the ick and being sick. So I've been using these things to catch the fish and it's worth a treat. I've caught a good a good amount of them. So 
So in here so far, I've caught the pink spot goby, the uh, tamini tang, pintail wrasse, the three bungai cardinals, one green kome, and the wool antheus. So need to get that. I think I maybe add another tang, two tangs in here, and then everything else is going to go into the other tank. Oh my god. Jawfish, he's, I've just left him at peace there just now. Uh, right, I'll go and try and see if I can catch this. Somebody. Um, I'm actually thinking I want to get Staple Gun up the stairs. Because he's kind of the most peaceful out of the lot of there. Um, so yeah, plus he's my pride and joy. Um, I don't want him getting any bother with being a, in a smaller tank from tongs and stuff. Okay, I've got a staple gun. Okay, buddy, just chill, mate. Chill, chill, chill. There we go. Right, I'm going to get him up the stairs, actually. Relax, buddy. Relax. That's the tank completely empty. Just starting to put some rock back. I wait to fill up with fresh water, freshly mixed salt water. It's been mixed for 24 hours. Good morning. So it's the next day. These guys have been in overnight, and they've had the first dose of copper. In this tank, everybody seems to be doing okay. Joel fish isn't eating though. Some of the other fish are not eating. But it's still early days. It's gonna take a wee while for them to settle down and get used to the new environment. The Tamini Tang, he's still hiding behind there. I think I'm gonna to have to get another plant or something just. So maybe the jaw fish has got somewhere to hide. I made this little rock with, on a tube, but <laughs> he seems fair to it just now. So this tank's doing okay. This tank, everybody is doing fine, apart from the dotty buck. I found the dotty buck in the black bucket that I had the rocks in. Now, unfortunately that wasn't heated and when I emptied all the rocks and then I started siphoning the water back into the aquarium, I discovered them on the bottom. Um, he was still alive, so I picked him up and I placed him into here. But this morning, nah, he was dead on the, on the, on the bottom of the tank, unfortunately. Uh, when I took him out and inspected him, he was covered in ick as well, so 
it sucks. Um, so that's one loss. But what I've got to remember is, if I hadn't removed these fish, I would have probably lost a hell of a lot more. Fox face. It's good to see him eating. He kind of stopped eating in the main displays. Feeling a wee bit poorly as well, I think. So now that the powder blue and the tongues are in quarantine, you get a closer look, you can see that ick is actually covered on the powder blue. It's just very difficult to see it. But yeah, so it looks like we've got them out of the, the display just in the nick of time. It's going to be two weeks in copper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat everybody just for internal parasites, just in case. And um, this is the ideal opportunity to treat the whole tank as well. So we'll be putting them through some Prazi Pro, putting them through some of this. And the upstairs tank, lights have just not long gone on. Everybody's kind of chilling around the filter. Everybody seems to be okay. See the uh, clownfish covered in it. And they look like they've got some scars from it. No fricky and the mandarins, they don't seem to be bothered. Staple gun was showing some ick on his body but it's really difficult to see but he's doing okay the male mandarin don't think he's very happy being in this tank he was loving life in the other one but i shall go and get some lobster eggs he loves them, so that'll cheer him up. I just got to make sure my two clownfish are okay. So I'm actually thinking what I'll do in a couple of days, if not tonight, I'll maybe give them a fresh water bath. But I'm just not wanting to be putting my hands in here causing any more stress so I'm gonna leave them for a wee while see how they uh, see how they are in a couple of days maybe right this is how the display looks the next day so all the rock was back in filled up with water and uh, there's not been any aquascaping, I've just thrown the rock in any old way. And this is how it's going to remain for the next 10 weeks. Obviously I'll still keep feeding the tank just to keep the bacteria population up. But um, yeah, so this is world's end for the next 10 weeks. Fishless. Sucks. But I'd rather do this than carry on. Uh, on a wish and a prayer that the fish would fight it off and I would say there was a 90% chance that most of them were going to die anyway so I feel as drastic a measure this is I just feel that it was the best move so yep yeah, that's it 
unfortunately I got ick despite being very careful <laughs> obviously I've made a mistake and I've lesson that I've learned now is that even the cleanup crew from now on I'm going to be quarantining so that's it for this episode thank you for watching bye bye